Yes, my name is Ben Chan, and welcome back to another Star Made Logic tutorial. In the last episode, we looked at how to build ourselves a handy little sensor template that we can copy and paste to build uh, sensor arrays like this one, which can detect certain percentages and certain iterations uh, for systems, or in this case, cargo. Uh, it's really easy and it's built basically so that you can place them all next to each other and easily set up your detection on both the left and the right so that you can update your display, uh, a display block that it's connected to very easily. In this episode, we'll look at how we can build ourselves another little handy little template specifically for cargo to be able to detect the uh, edge cases basically. So when it's uh, vacant or empty and when it can't pull anymore and that'll let you uh, have much more control over your storage solutions for your stations, your planet bases, your ships, and pretty much anything else that you want to use cargo on. So let's jump right on in. So we'll fly over here, and we're going to start by placing an activation module. Now this activation module is what's going to detect from the storage over here, um, and it will be detecting whether or not we can actually pull all that we want to pull or whether we don't have enough space. Uh, basically, it's going to alert ourselves and stop our circuit that's pulling from actually continuing to pull uh, when it can't pull anymore. So what we're going to do is select our activation module. We're going to drop an OR gate on top. Then we're going to select the OR gate and put it back into the activation module. Now, reselecting the activation module, let's drop a knot next to it. And then selecting the knot, we're going to place a whole heap of blocks. So we're going to place our red light behind. And this is more aesthetic so that during the we, wherever we place this template, we're getting a bit of feedback to know if it's working correctly or not. On top of the knot gate, we're going to drop a button. And then on top of the OR, we're going to drop an AND gate, like so. And now this AND gate, we're going to place into the OR, like so. So you can see here, activation module into the OR gate on top and the NOT gate behind. NOT gate goes into the button, the light, and the AND gate, and the AND gate goes back into the OR on the bottom. Now, on top of the AND gate, we're going to drop another OR gate like so. Selecting that, we're going to place another NOT. That NOT we're going to place into our green light next to it. Um, and we're also going to connect it into another button underneath, like so. We're also going to take this knot and also connect it into the end, like so. So now we can toggle these. And you can see that our circuits are set up. And we're pretty well done. The last thing that we'll want to do is add in some display modules on the back. And this is really if you want to add in a secondary monitor or if we get the functionality soon to be able to, I guess, add two feeds, uh, two display modules into one and combine them, then this will be helpful in that regard. Um, but at the moment, I'm not going to do too much with it. I'll basically, I guess I'll, I'll put something on top. So, well, not there, there. Um, just so we can get a bit of feedback I guess um, and we'll connect it in like so making sure we're connecting to the right one so the button goes into each and we can just type in here empty and the one below full obviously if you're doing this yourself you'll do it a bit more pretty than what I've done but you get the basic setup the one on the top is for the empty the one on the bottom is for the full now you'll be looking at this going, okay, that's great, but the storage block's over there and it's over here. Well, with a recent update to the rails and being able to connect outputs uh, from blocks that aren't logic to actual logic blocks, it also applies for our storage block here. So what we'll do is we'll select our storage block and we're going to connect it to the end on the bottom and the OR on the very top. Then we'll take our activation module that we use to control whether we're pulling or not, and we're going to connect it into this OR here. And there we go. Now, what we might do to clean this up is uh, go into our options. 
and we're going to switch off the connection between logic blocks to make it a bit neater so we can see what we're doing without pipes all everywhere. And one thing that people like to do is put sort of like an output right next to their main button so they can see what's going on. And it's the basic as finding a knot that goes into the red light and connecting it to another red light. Finding a knot that goes into a green light and connecting it into the other green light. All right, and there we go. So you can see our cargo is empty. We've got our, our um, button here. We've got our outputs on top. And we've got our um, cargo uh, storage container on the bottom. And if you wanted to make this neater, we could also come here and we'll move um, move these down so the button will connect to the bottom one there. And then I guess we've got to fly around to our AND gates on this side as well and connect them to the other one like so. Otherwise, we're going to be trying to look on top and can't see anything. All right, so now we're all set up. Our clock's going, our sensor blocks are connected to the storage, and our edge case module's also connected. So what we can do is flip it on. You'll see it starts pulling, and the light has gone off. Our percentage has gone up, and we've got about 76.3%. You can see all the lights are off there. And when we pull as much as we pull, so what will happen is when it pulls and attempts to pull and can't pull anymore, you'll see the red light goes on which eventually we'll get to when it manages to pull. All right, so it's pulled 100%, so it's gonna uh, go at this point, and you'll see it's ticking along, and any time now, red light. Come on, red light. Ah, no, I know why, because we haven't got any more cargo left to pull. So we'll fly over here, and we'll drop in something. Some ship colors, like so. And there's a red light. So it'll help if uh, if I have nothing else that it can pull. Now we'll go back and we'll just expand this one so that we don't get stuck with it going. There's nowhere for anything. So you can see our percentage is updated. Our other one has updated to full. And we'll switch it off. Now, the other thing that we would want to do is the one which says full. We want to take that button and connect it into the activation module. And this is for if you go away and leave this on transferring stuff, when it finishes, you want it to switch it off so it's no longer pulling. So you can see there, if I leave it on, it's going to go full and go, no, I can't take any more. Red light goes on and it switches the circuit off. Now, if I go over here and have it pulling from the thing, now you'll see the red light stays on and that's because we haven't attempted to pull again. It's just taking content out. So you could make other ways of being able to detect it based on this uh, sensor circuit and detecting whether or not it's going up or going down. But what we've also got set up is this AND gate and this AND gate goes into our OR and it's going to detect that when it becomes vacant it's going to also uh, reset it. Sorry, not vacant, empty. So you'll see when we get fully empty which will happen eventually you can see we're slowly pulling stuff out and maybe I'll speed that up. So when we're pulling stuff out um, it will actually, uh, when it gets empty, it'll also reset to say you're not having an issue pulling anything because it's empty. There's, <laughs> there's plenty of space. Um, and that's just built into this edge case circuit module thing here. And there it goes. So light lights up saying it's empty and all kinds of things. And you could use those triggers to be able to trigger anything that you want as well. But that's pretty much that circuit, and you can see we can toggle it on again, and it'll pull stuff. One thing to note about this circuit 
is that the uh, detection from the cargo, or the storage block rather, with the uh, edge cases, so the activation module and the OR gate, is a little finicky when it comes to working with a rail docker. Um, so you might need to have a temporary thing for your um, cargo to be pulled into, and then your storage block or main storage that you're detecting from to uh, pull straight from that. Otherwise, it'll get confused. It's not sure what it's doing, um, and that causes issues. So uh, that is one thing that you will want to note um, is that it can be a bit of a problem. So if you're trying to build containers or such that use these sort of edge cases and um, things, then that'll be a problem. Now. It's also good to note that the sensor arrays do work with this because it's always checking according to the clock that you've got there. So that's something to note. And the other things that you can do is if you're unsure about your clock, you can always uh, put in here um, different things. So in this case, um, when it goes from empty to not empty or something, you could put in a button that triggers your clock to make sure that it's running, but I haven't had any situations where it's been a particular issue. But that is the edge case module that you can then go and copy and save. And with these two different modules, you'll be able to build uh, some pretty sweet uh, circuits in order for detecting how cargo works and for the sensor circuit, to be able to detect anything for your other systems as well. But until next time, my name is Bench and thanks for watching.